Welcome to the next evolution of testing. BlazeMeter has always been known for performance testing, but from now on it will be known for complete continuous testing. Now your unit, API, UI functional, performance and user experience testing, as well as production testing and monitoring, will be completed all through one continuous testing platform focused on agile teams. So BlazeMeter now goes beyond performance and API testing with new UI functional testing. And in BlazeMeter tradition, we are supporting open source by supporting Selenium functional testing. Now for this and the next few videos, we're going to be using our banking application as our target application to show how we can use the BlazeMeter platform to test an application. So here's our, our application. And if I log in as our test user, what you'll see is it's an application that mimics a, a banking application. So you can review the your your savings, you can do various other functions. Um, it also talks to backend APIs that we'll be using to show how we can test that in later videos. Now our development team have been working on an update and that update is to add the ATM search feature to the product. And we're gonna show you how we can use the tool to test this new functionality. Now in test of, instead of passing this off to a third party testing team to test this, we're gonna show how a developer or a tester in an agile team can record the functional testing using our Chrome plugin and then rerun these tests using various different browser types. So let's start with that, getting the plugin. So the plugin comes from the, the Chrome store and as you can see here, you just go to the Chrome store, you select the BlazeMeter plugin, you load it into Chrome and as you can see, I've already done that and we can start recording. So let's start by naming the test. So we'll call it dbank ATM search. You press record. We're now recording the, the session, the UI we're looking at. So we're gonna start by setting some labels. So the first step is gonna be a login. So let's call this login. We then go and log into the application. So we're gonna log in as our test user. Enter the password. Now, as you can see, we're capturing these steps in the plugin. So we've got six UI and two JAMX. Next thing, let's go and check a balance. So let's add another step. So we're going to go and click on this uh, view checking. So let's go and look at the, just uh, navigate the application. And then now we're going to go and do the ATM search. So for the ATM search, we click on this, this object here, we enter a zip code, and then we hit return. To, and that will then make a call to an API and return the ATMs. At that point, we're going to log out. So we're going to create another step called log out. And we'll just click log out. So at that point, we've recorded that test. So we, we stopped the recording. Now we can edit this test. So within the context of plugin, we can take that test and edit it. So if I go back to our plugin, we can look at the, we can actually edit the scripts. We can save it to our local machine, or we can run it on the, the cloud platform. So let's start first with the edit. So this has launched this, this window here. Um, we can then run this to test it. So if I click on the play button, we can rerun this test to make sure that it works. So we're gonna go through those same steps and validate that the recording we just made works. So we've logged in. We went to the, as you can see here, we went to the check balance. We then went to the ATM search. And then we logged out. So we know the test works. Um, we can modify these. So each of these fields, we can go into here and we can change the test. But we're going to stick with, with that as it is for now. So we're going to, first we're going to save this. So let's save this to my local machine. So let's save it in this folder here. And we call it bank ATM search save. Now you can run these tests directly from the plugin into the platform, but we're gonna now go and create a test using that new recording we just made. So I've now logged into the BlazeMeter platform. You can see along the top of the screen here, we have these separate tabs for functional performance, mock services, and APIs. We're gonna run a functional test. 
So first thing to do is create a new test. We have the option of an API test or a functional test. We're going to do functional. Now we're going to name the test. On the left hand side, we're going to give this a name. So ATM search functional. We have the option to also enable an email. So when the test runs, the results will be emailed to the user. So we're going to turn that on. And the next step is to actually upload that test script. So we're going to click the, the upload button. Select the test that we recorded earlier. Now that's been uploaded. And you see on the right hand side, it's currently being validated. So that validation is to confirm the test script is valid and there's no inconsistencies in the script. Uh, when that passes, basically we're ready to run the test. So we're now passed. Um, now we can also choose to run this in different locations. We're going to leave it the default, but at this point we could choose to run this on premise using your own local grid. You could run this within your own environment, but we're going to leave it on the default. We can now run this test. So on the left hand side, we have this option to run test. We can also use the scheduler. So the schedule allows us to either do one off schedules or repeating schedules, but let's just click run test. We're now standing up the environment to run the test. So what you'll see in a second is uh, the starting of the infrastructure we need to run the test. Uh, and then the test will actually start running. So the test is now running and you can see it's broken down into these different steps as we recorded. So we have the login step, then the check balance and the ATM search. And what we're seeing here is each of those steps is being run. And then the state is on the right hand side, the output of each of those steps. Now there's also a summary screen. So on the summary screen, we've got a high level overview. So we can see that we used uh, Chrome version 75. Each of those test cases passed. If we go back to the details again, what we can also see is uh, there's a corresponding video that comes with this. So if I look on the right hand side again, say we look at the ATM search button and we double click on that. Um, it will take you to that part of the video. So the video on the left will change according to what you click on on the right. So as you can see there, we're slowly stepping through that on the on the right hand side. And if I go to the logout, we do the same thing. If I click on the logout, it will take me to the logout part of the video. So within the recording, we have all the data about the test. But also if I go to the left hand side and we click on the waterfall, we have lots more detail about the actual test itself. So when we look at the login step, you can see here we have the waterfall of all the performance of all the different steps within the test. When you scroll down those. And also if we look at the other ones, so the ATM search one we've been looking at, again, we get the, the time response times for each of the components of the page. How long it took to load, and you can mouse over those to get more details. So if I had the mouse over that, we get more detail as to exactly where the, where the delay was on that particular activity. Now, what about if I wanted to run this test again, but instead of Chrome, I want to use Firefox. So if I click on the, the test itself again, we can go back to configuration. We can then look at the script and I can just modify this and say, instead of Chrome, I want to use Firefox. And we rerun the test. So it's currently validating. When the validation is finished, we will click on the run test to run this again. And we run the same test, but just using Firefox. So I click run test. We're now standing this up again. And this time we're going to use a Firefox browser instead of a Chrome browser. So the test is complete. If we look at the summary tab, we can see now this is used Firefox instead of using Chrome. And again, the tests are passed. And if we look to the video and we look to an example in the video so I went there you'll see the browser in the video this is now Firefox I can make that full screen and you see that that's a Firefox browser instead of the Chrome browser so please join me in the next video where we'll show you how we can link this functional test with a performance test to run an end user test